First day back in the Sunshine State, <laughs> and it's raining all day. Uh, I'll, I'll have to find something to do. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane-damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. Section here, and this little section over here that I never got done um, before. So let me get started. Now don't worry, this won't be another video about stripping bottom paint, but it just is this never ending job that I just kept going and going, uh, always more to do. And here I went back to using the, the regular stripper where I could just put it on and strip it off right away to kind of get this finished. Yeah, I don't know what else to say, but this job is killing me. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, that little tiny crack. Uh, and I've got it pretty much ground out, uh, been grinding and I spent, I don't know, I ground all the way till out. It must have taken at least two hours to grind this back. It's pretty thick. So where this is, this drops down and the crack was right at the floor of the bilge. And so whatever the pressure was, uh, that's kind of what, what prevented it from moving and caused the crack. So I've got it pretty much ground out, but, um, I've got to grind it back a little farther. And I don't know if you could, how well you can see this, but all the different layers. And you can tell you're doing a good job when the layers are straight, right? So the layers are straight and spaced evenly apart. Um, that means you're not getting a bunch of wows in this and you want this to be straight, uh, not dished. And it's a little bit hard to do that with a grinder. So actually, I come back and fix it up with my um, belt sander and that makes it so it's a nice smooth transition. But I think I'm gonna go a little bit wider. Uh, for the optimal, um, based off of, this is about, maybe 30, 35 to 40 thousandths. Um, then to get 12 times that, that puts it at about a half an inch or four tenths of an inch. And so I need about between a third and a half an inch between uh, each layer to get a good bond. Uh, and then we should be good. Uh, so I'll come make this a little bit wider and uh, we'll get some glass on this guy. One of the things I did find as I started grinding again, after doing the bottom paint, uh, the the grinder works great for initially grinding it, but I found even more than my belt sander, I'm really starting to grab that larger sander with the eight inch disc. And and really that's, that's really the best tool for a lot of this. Now, nothing beats the belt sander for getting in that curve uh, right there between the hole because it's got, I just, you just use the curve on that belt. But for everything else, I love this other sander from Harbor Freight. In fact, I went through a couple of them uh, we, we had to, uh, the first one stopped working and I went and got a second one and that second one broke. Uh, but this time I was smart and got the warranty. The keel on the boat is solid glass. I think it's about eight layers or so. And so it took me quite a bit to, to cut this up and I tried, I wanted to lay it up in one setting. If you can lay up in one setting, you're going to get a lot better bond. Working alone, it takes me a while for each piece of cloth to put up. So I only mix as much epoxy as I need to do one cloth at a time, or one layer at a time. Sometimes as I get toward the smaller layers, I might do two at a time, but it's just better that you don't have as much of a rush as you're trying to get it up, and then you can take the time to get it uh, laminated nicely. Yeah, what I've found is always on the curves, when you're doing the curves, it's really difficult to get that air squeegeed out because as you squeegee one direction, um, then the top of the curve will come loose and then you squeegee the top of the curve and the other section will get a little air in it. So you just have to work it back and forth. Uh, what I'll find is I'll put my hand on, on one side and the squeegee on the other and work it down until I can get it uh, where there's just no air bubbles left in it. And really there's, I've found there's nothing but patience. It just takes time and take your time to get it uh, good. Now it's the next day and uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So it's still, I mean, it's hard, but it's, if you don't let it cure all the way when you try to sand it, it'll, um, it'll gum up the paper. So I might give it another day before I sand this down and get it fared. This always needs to be uh, taken down because the layers don't match what the feathering is because I generally make them oversized. So uh, let's start grinding. So on repairs like this, I found it, it really doesn't help to use peel ply at all because I'm going to take off that entire top layer and maybe someone has a better way to do it. But this way, uh, by putting the extra glass in there and then flattening that glass back down to meet your contour with the uh, smallest piece on the top just makes it turn out super nice. 
Well, coming down here into the bilge. The newer boats have a bilge sump here. My boat just is uh, flat uh, with the floor here. So I cut it open because I figured my keel would be full of water. And I look down there and there's no water down there. So the answer to why my bilges are dry, I think is right here. Yeah, see a little water coming out of there. I think there's a crack. Now I already ground this back because uh, there was just a, a little crack. The problem is that I discovered is this guy here. It's got this little bulkhead, but the tabbing has come loose on that bulkhead down there. And this is right where that crack is. So actually that the the uh, the upper crack, the big one, is right along this edge up here uh, where this basically this uh, this floor uh, made a hard spot uh, and held it and then the, as the keel pushed in it cracked there and then down below it's right there where the lower crack is so let's see if I can get this cleaned up Take, taking a breather uh, after I just pulled out the bulkhead um, that'll be easy repair the light spot so this is where the crack repair was up here and then that light spot down there, that's where the uh, other repair is that I'm working. And so it's leaking like, it's got to be leaking like right in around here. So that's where that crack is. So I'll be able to repair it from the inside as well as the outside. And the good news is, if you look all the way up there, um, I just stick my head in this little hole. Uh, the, the bulkhead up there, uh, the tabbing's all good on that. So we're good. The only thing I have to fix is this. And in the back... There is no tabbing. I mean, there's no bulkhead. <laughs> so, here we go. Cleaned up in there now. I'm gonna get the rest of this tabbing out and then I'll, I'll be able to grind that there and put a patch on the inside. But underneath, here, if we go all the way under there, you can see there's some cracking underneath there. There's a solid piece, and I think that's just mostly in the filler, but you know, why not be extra safe? So I'm gonna grind that back, and then I'm going to put a, a layer underneath the uh, entire keel. So in order to repair the keel, I, uh, I couldn't be just sitting on the blocks I had to jack the boat up with uh, jack stands. So jack stand here in the front. I've got two in the back, uh, well, four in the back and three in the front. Uh, and then I just jack it up until it's just loose off the blocks. Um, and so then I'll leave the blocks there uh, in case it falls. <laughs> it shouldn't fall, but um, just as a safety. And actually I, I had to do it twice. The first time these jack stands just sunk enough that it was touching again. And so I just brought it up another uh, half an inch. So it's also that allows me to take the pressure off for fixing the these repairs as well as putting that plate or the uh, the piece underneath the keel. Now I'm not showing all of the laminating but I laminated two layers uh, underneath that keel and then um, put a layer of fairing on it and so you see me here cutting off of the excess and then uh, sanding it down. It took me two layers of fairing but I've got that the bottom of the keel uh, extra strong and, and super nice and flat down there. So it's good as new. Yeah, I might even say it's with the extra layers, it's better than new with my extra skid plate under there. I worked on the keel almost the entire time, the two weeks that I was there in Florida working on the boat, but it wasn't the only thing I did. I just have broken up the videos to, to show you one area at a time. I'll be releasing other videos that will probably be come out as I'm back down in Florida for the next round of work on the boat. So here we see the final product with, well, almost final, with at least one layer of fairing on. Uh, and I thought that top crack was going to be the big one, but it turns out this bottom crack down here uh, and putting the layers on the bottom was way more work. Got lots more interesting boat work coming up, taking small holes, making them bigger, and then fixing them, as well as a, a bunch of other repairs we'll be doing uh, in the future. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Brian Sailing. Uh, hopefully you've noticed that I put less commercials on. I just do commercials at the beginning at the end. Uh, I'm just doing this for fun now. So uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. One thing that really helps me out though is if you can give it a, a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment. That, that's a lot of encouragement for me. So thanks a lot for coming along for the journey. 
And I'll see you next time with lots more boat work and excitement. Live your dreams.